Hey, thanks everyone for tuning in um, to my channel and my video. Today we're going to be setting up AWS's SES SMTP relay with a Jenkins email notification. So that being said, um, it sounds intimidating. It's actually not as bad. Um, it's just getting the basic knowledge down and the connections right. And once you get the connection right, you're pretty much golden. So that's what we're going to go over today. Um, we're going to have a few gotchas to go over. We're going to have a few steps. Um, I'm going to have some errors that you may be seeing that you don't know how to resolve or things just come up, you know, you never know. So we're going to go ahead and delve in. Uh, first, um, I would like to say that I am working this off a of Mac. Um, I'm, I don't have like a video of anything set up right now of, of, um, setting up a Docker container with a Jenkins. This is uh, kind of more of an intermediate level. If you guys would like more videos about that, please tell me below in the comments and I will gladly get something going. So let's go ahead and move on. Tools uh, necessary in order to complete this project. All right, guys, so here we are in the um, Amazon account. This is just a training account that you can, that I just signed up for free with AWS. We're gonna go here to the simple email service. If it's not here, you'll just type, just type SES, simple email service. It's taking us here. And it should bring you to this like home dashboard page. Then what we want is the SMTP settings. So basically this is where we're gonna create our SMTP user. So let's go ahead and start here. Okay, so here's just kind of like a IAM username setup. Um, I just pretty much use the default. I don't do anything super fancy with this. Create. Your user has been created successfully, so let's go ahead and download the credentials. Now this is very important, guys. When you do download these credentials, you, we need to store these in a, in a um, location where you won't lose them. This carries the username and password that won't show up again. So if you forget these, you're just going to have to create a new one. Um, not worth the headache, but if you have a um, secure place to store these, I would go ahead, like a locked... Uh, a uh, file folder or something. Okay. So that was super easy. Let's go ahead and hop back over to Jenkins. Now this is just a um, standard Jenkins. I just uh, created this through a Docker container to get it spun up. Uh, obviously, I don't have any jobs yet. It's just um, spitting out on my local host. So let's go ahead and go to Manage Jenkins. We'll go to Configure System. And we will... And obviously, if this was a real thing, we want the Jenkins URL to be uh, different. We're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna go all the way down to here to the email notification. Now you'll notice there is the extended email notification, which we can use. I use the email notification first just for testing purposes. Um, it's easier. So, cause you'll be able to test the configuration by sending the email. So the SMTP server, we're gonna copy this server name for the SMTP, put that there. Uh, you don't have to have this filled out. Um, I don't have it filled out right now, so we're not gonna worry about it. Let's click advanced. We're gonna use SMTP authentication. And here's the information we're gonna input through the file that we just downloaded, the credentials.csv file. Copy pasta, copy pasta. Port, um, I 
Um, and this is where we get creative if we want to. We could do. Okay, so something important that we need to remember to do is to go ahead and add an email address. Now, I went ahead and verified a new email address. This is just a couple of my, like a personal one that we can do. When you hit verify this email address, it is going to send a verification email to this address. You'll go over and you'll get something like this from the region of where you're at. You'll just go ahead and click this link here it'll take you back and it'll give you a congratulations, you successfully verified your email address. Now this step was really important because earlier I kind of forgot about it and I was wondering why it wasn't working. So yeah, um, don't forget the first thing we gotta get done is the email address. In fact, it should, the status should be, yep, verified now. Yep, essentially this is gonna be the email address that it's going to send the email addresses from. So if you want to create like a Gmail just for this, like a Jenkins Gmail, you could totally do something like that. Um, anything more generic, I wouldn't advise like a personal email just for security reasons. But let's go ahead and move on. So let's go ahead and test this out. So test configuration by sending test email. Um, and honestly, I'm just going to send it to my personal. Okay, all right, here is the big shebang. Whoops, ah, so exciting. Okay, so the email was successfully sent. So for verification reasons, let's go ahead and run back and see if the email showed up. Okay, uh, this is test email sent from Jenkins. Oh yeah, oh and yeah, you guys, this might actually be sent to spam. Um, double check spam accounts just in case um, it does get in, but okay, cool. So this is verif uh, verification that Jenkins is sending us emails, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and see this in real use. So let's like go ahead and um, send maybe an attachment of a bill, build status. All right guys, so I went ahead and created this just kind of test job. Um, again, I'm not gonna go over in super detail about it. I can show that in another video if you guys are interested. But again, this is not about just like an overall Jenkins. This is just setting up the SMTP with Jenkins. Okay, so we'll go ahead and say, default uh, project recipient list. Yes, it's going to be, Gmail account again. Reply to list. No reply at gmail.com. I just typically leave this the default content type unless you want to. The subject line here, I usually put something, I usually just put the build, like the job number. Build notification job results um, and then you could put something this is the content so you can just say the following attachment is the log for the past build you can put the build number you can get creative with it I really um, so attachments so this is where if you guys look down here you'll want to look at the formatting because it'll be uh, based off the ant formatting and the base directory is the workspace which actually is really helpful um, and I clear the workspace after every job run so it just kind of restarts it um, it's typically what I do 
So I'm just gonna say attach build log. You don't have to. I'm just gonna go ahead, actually I'm gonna do compress and attach build log. So, and then we're going, going look, we're going to go down here, advanced settings, triggers. So we want to, and you could save it to workspace. We just want to trigger on success, not send to developers. We're going to send it, um, we're going to say, hey, the job's successful, send it. Okay, so looking here, even though we see that it says finished and success, it wasn't really a success because it failed sending email. So you guys, we really have to be um, careful about this, the false positives. So that being said, oh, I know what I did wrong. Okay. I'm gonna go back to manage Jenkins. I know exactly what I did wrong. So the email notifications, I put it here, but I didn't add anything to extended email notification. Oh, good one, Monica. All right, so let's do some copy pasta. Okay, one thing to mention is, is that you can get way more specific with the extended email notification, a configuration area, see how you can add, you know, allow domains, you could ex make sure certain people are excluded, you know, it has the build number, build status, you can check the build console, like it has all these, you can add scripts if you need to, it's a lot more, um, if you want to get really specific with this. Typically, so that's what exactly I should have done, is I should have just copy-pasted everything from here to there, but I like testing the configuration first, just making sure it works here. Okay, so let's go double check that everything looks good. Recipient list, trigger on success. Okay, let's give this another shot. Okay, so we do have success again, but we also have a sending email, so it looks like it should have worked. So let's go ahead and verify. All right, guys, I realized that I had to go back and put something inside the actual execute shell for it to do stuff, so that's my bad. But anyway, we went back to the editable, temp editable email notification. Everything is still the same. Compress and attach, build log. Let's save that. Let's build it again. Blue, good sign. Okay, foobar, 
sent email. Okay, so I think we went ahead and got the email here. Let's take a look. Okay, and there's just the log that uh, we requested sent for us. Echo Fubar Fubar. All right, so looks like we got that settled with um, AWS. All right, and that's about it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, if you are still experiencing some problems with it, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll try to help however I can. And look out for the next video. The next video in the series is gonna be working with the Azure SendGrid. So I will have that out probably within the next week or so. Um, thanks for tuning in. Oh, and uh, before I forget, please feel free to subscribe and uh, that way it'll be easier for when I release new tech videos. So, all right. Thanks, guys. I will see you later.